you guys. I know you guys love the Word. <clears throat> I'm just about done. <clears throat> One day I remember the Lord. He said, Mark, he said, don't say this to them and don't say that to them. He said, this is what I want you to tell them. Say uh, inside every heart, inside every man, and inside every woman, there's a God-sized hoe. I'll never forget this as long as I live. I've stuck with it. lived with it all my life. Before I even become a, in a pulpit, I was... A, he just brought me back into the church for whatever reason. But it's still my heart to intercede. It's still my heart to pray. It's still my heart because I heard what he said. He said, remember that one thing. He said, you were just like them. He said, their sin was no worse than yours. He said, their sin will send them to hell. And he said, your sin would have sent you to hell. He said, but tell them what they're searching for is me. They're thirsting for truth. Don't you understand now? <clears throat> When we go back when he said to her, the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and the truth. If you don't have truth in your life, you can never worship. If you don't have the spirit in your life, you can never worship. You've got to have both. You know why? Because without the spirit, there is no truth. Without the truth, there is no spirit. Because God said, when I go away, I'm going to leave you the spirit of truth. That's good preaching. I'm going to leave you the spirit of truth. He's going to fill you to overflowing. And now when I walk through life, Joyce, I recognize the devil. I recognize him in it from a mile away. I say, I know who you are. Give me some devils now. I want to cast them. Give me some devils in Jesus' name. And any other spirit that's not of God, I command them to come out. Any other spirit that's not of God, I command them to flee in the name of Jesus. And that's how you do it. I'll come in here at night and I'll pray for you. I'll pray for me. I'll pray for the greenback. I'll pray whatever God puts on my heart. But every night I bind the devil. Every single day I bind him up. I say, where are you, devil? Come and let's have a fight right now. Come on in here, devil, and let's have a fight. I've got the power. Where are you now, you coward? Glory to God. Say, you said that to the devil? I sure did because I have all of heaven's authority backing me up. God is greater than the devil in your life. God is greater than the world in your life. You hear this preacher, praise God. God has something to say tonight. God said, I've given you the spirit of truth. Who's greater than the Holy Ghost? He said, when I go away, he said, I'm going to leave somebody with you. And it's the Holy Ghost. He's on the inside. Glory to God, if you go ahead and give him just a round of praise right now. And thank God tonight for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I got more all in here. I want to end on this. I thought my devil. Satan had been overthrown in her life. Satan has been overthrown in your life. He's not been overturned. He's been overthrown. I think about that. I told him, I said, you know, I said, you had your chance. He said, I'll do anything. He told me one time, I'm telling you, I'll give him count for God. He, he told me, he said, I'll do anything. He said, come back to him. I said, I'll never come back to you. He didn't come as a roaring lion. He come like this. He come to, he come to deceive me. He come to, to, to entice me. He said, I can give you this. I can give you that. I don't need nothing you got. Devil said, God owns it all. He owns the world and the fullness of earth. That's why you need to know the world. The word, you need to defeat the devil with the word of God. Amen. God has overthrown the devil in your life. Somebody shout, Amen. He's been overthrown. He's been cast out of our life. Jesus said, I saw the devil cast out of heaven's life. He said, But don't rejoice. He said, That the spirits are in subjection to you. He said, But rather that your names are written where? In the Lamb's book of life. This woman, this is my last point. This woman went from being an outcast. She was an outcast to becoming an overcomer. She, you're an over, look at your neighbor and raise your hands to heaven in surrender to God. You're an overcomer tonight. My God, you ought to shout, it's not been easy. I know it's not. I know the battle's been hard. But you're an overcomer. You've overcome tonight. Hallelujah. And where I'm going, you know that very moment that she received Him. That very second, her life would be, her destiny would be, her, her eternal destination would always be different than what it would have been. It's still about Jesus, no matter how we preach, no matter what we talk, it's still about Jesus and Him crucified. 
It's still about the blood of the cross and the thorns and, and, and the crown of thorns on his head and the, and the cat of nine tails on his back, 39 stripes. It's still about the Savior. It's still about the blood. It's still about resurrection and, and authority in our life because of the blood. But I want you to know tonight, the battle, it can rage, but God is greater than the battle in your life. God will be the one. He said you'll overcome by the Word of God, the Word of your testimony. And by the blood, come on, raise your hand. And by the blood of the Lamb, this is what's happened to this woman. All of a sudden, her pain had become her persuasion. Her pain, her wounds had become, listen to all of us need to hear this, had become her persuasion. When Paul stood before King Herod Agrippa, he said, I'm glad this day that I can speak for myself. He began to tell how he once was. and How he killed them. He did, he killed them. He said, I've killed Christians. And I hunted them down like dogs, like animals. But he said, on this certain road one day, going into Damascus, the king of all glory, just like this woman right here, came to him and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he looked right at King Agrippa and, 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 and pleaded with him. Pers- tried to persuade him to come to God, to come to Christ, to give his life fully to God, holy to God. Without reservation, without hesitation, without shame, church. We don't need to be ashamed of the one who died on the tree for us. But he was fully persuaded. And that's the way you and I need to be. See, the same as it is with me today and her then. I know that I've been persuaded. And here's where I'm going. And I believe tonight that you've been persuaded. And because... Of that, because she listened, and I'm real close here. I probably I want to. I want to. I was going to stop. But I, want to, I want to show you this. The Lord told me verbatim. He said, because of her persuasion, when she went back to the men, she said, those that would listen to her, he said, would also be preserved. See, it's not just about me and you. God has persuaded you. So you can persuade others. Why? Because He wants to preserve their life just like this woman. That's why the church is here. The church is not here for entertainment. It's become an entertainment place for the most part. For a lot of places, there's no more anointing. There's no more power. But I want you to know tonight that there is power where people are fully persuaded. And they listen to the voice of God. And they don't follow a program, but they follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. And that's what I've always tried to do ever since I've come here. And it's not been easy. I've had people walk out on me. I've had people get mad at me. I've said some hard things. I've said some things. I've gone home and got mad at God. I said, God, they all left. He said, that's all right. Said none of them turned and left on me. He said, you just do what I tell you to do. I'll never forget that. And I mean, I'm saying, God, I'm trying to build the church. He said, I'll build my church, son. You don't worry about it. You preach what I give. And that's the way I live my life. The looser the grip, he told me, Brother Dale, the tighter the hole. Glory be to God. If you believe it, say amen. One last thing, I'm going to let you go. Stand to your feet. Do you know that the word water pot has eight letters in it? God showed me this. I preach this all the time, but never like this. Eight letters. in The word water pot. Eight is the number of new beginnings. <clears throat> See, the only way you're ever going to have a new beginning, listen, this is the most important part of my message. I was getting here, I've been waiting the whole night. The only way that you're truly, let's watch this. I'm going to use this as an example. That you're truly going to have a new beginning. <clears throat> You've got to take all that junk, all that stuff. And leave it at the feet of Jesus. And turn and walk away. Will you do that tonight by faith? Everybody in here, will you stretch your hands this way and say, God, I'm going to use an example as a water pot. That water pot was not something that she needed anymore. And and anything that you and I don't need that would hinder us with God, anything that you and I don't need in our life that would stop us from getting where we need to get with God, this woman left it there. The devil was screaming, no, don't lose it. Oh, you need that. 
The devil was screaming, oh no, that's the most important thing. Just, but that woman didn't listen to the devil anymore. And you and I, that's the key. You can't listen to the devil. You've got to listen to God. So that's where it all begins. Every one of us listen to this preacher. You've got to listen. And that's where it all begins. And then you'll leave your watch. She listened to what he said. And she left it there. She left her shame. She left her disappointment. She left her evil sins, her lifestyle, her everything in the top. She left it there because she didn't need it anymore. I don't need what the devil has. I don't need what the world has. Come on, I don't need religion. I don't need somebody to, to try to give me wisdom when they don't even know what they're talking about. I'm sorry, but I've got the wisdom of God. I've got, and if I need wisdom, I'm going to go to my counsel. Somebody that knows God, amen. But the problem is, is we don't leave it with them. We'll come to the altar. I'm sorry, Lord. Can I say this? We'll co- yeah, we'll come to the altar. Yep, there I'm going. We'll leave it here for just a minute. I've even seen people say this. Well, I've seen people go to the altar twice. It's been a while. I've seen Sometimes I wonder and I'll come back to the altar and say, Lord, maybe I just need to hold on to that. I don't know, but I've seen them come to the altar and be set free, go back and come back and be bound again. Look at your neighbor and say, leave your water pot. Come on, tell them out loud. Come on, let's tell them. Let's, let's get over to faith right now. Say, leave your water pot right here. Leave it at the, leave it with G. Leave your water pot. You don't need it no more, Joyce. You don't need it, Abba. You don't need it, church. You don't need it, Jamie. You don't need it, Debbie. You don't need it anymore, Bill. You don't need it. Leave, my God, I feel God. Leave it at the feet of God, just like this woman, because you got a brand new beginning, God said. A brand new life. Say, Mark, I've not maybe been doing so good. It's okay. I've said to God once before. It's been a while, but I have. God, can I start again? I've not been. He said, sure you can. You can start over. I said, I can? Yeah, you can start over. And I, but I meant I was going to do it right. I said, he's going to help me to do it right. But it don't matter where you are. It don't matter where you are. This woman was an underdog. This woman was not like the us. She was far away from God. But here's the great thing. God went near to her. And I want you to encourage you. Grab your neighbor's hand as we leave tonight. God is near to you tonight. Look at me. God is near to us. Call upon me. I hear him while he said, while I may be found. Seek me. He said, while I may be found. I'm sorry. Here's what he said. Seek me. Thank you, Lord. I'll get it right. Seek me while I may be found. He said, call upon me now while I'm near. He's here now. He's coming back for his church. My God, brother, that's good preaching. He's coming back, church, for a spotless church. Amen. That left their water pots. That surrendered. He's coming back for us. Somebody said, what kind of church he's coming back for? Pentecostal church? Baptist church? I said, no, he's coming back. He's coming back for He's coming back for a church that surrendered and made themselves ready that's left their water pots at the feet of the cross, at the feet of Jesus. If you believe it, somebody help me preach and say amen in this place. Come on, just give him a hand clap of praise. Now, how do you feel tonight? Are you ready to go out and take on the devil and, and fight some giants tonight? Somebody shout, leave that water pot. Shout it out, leave that water pot. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to the King. Grab your neighbor's hand. He revealed to that woman, Harold, he said, I'll never leave you. You don't need another man. You don't need another husband. You don't need another lover. You don't need another anything. I'm, he revealed to her, I'll never leave you. Ooh, I've got all of heaven backing us up tonight. You've got all of heaven backing you up tonight. Why? Because he said, I'll never leave you. Oh, I just don't know, preacher, how I feel today. Brittany Burton, oh, I just don't know. Things are just, he'll never leave you gotta, you got to get that sword out at midnight hour. You get the sword out at the heat of the well, amen, and going to the well in the heat of the day. And he's waiting there for you. He's giving you something that you can use that will change your life forever. That's what he's done tonight for us. We've left it at the feet of Jesus. I believe it by faith. I'm leaving it at the feet of Jesus tonight. And I'm going to have a brand new start, a brand new life, a brand new beginning. I'm ready to go. Amen. I'm ready to do what God wants me to do. I, I've got a purpose. I've got a, he's got a plan for my life. Look at me. He's going to do it. For you believe it, will you give him one more hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. Brother Dale, church, I love you. First of all, I love you. We praise God for God's hand on Josh tonight. Brother Dale, we love you. Church, I love you. Lead us out of this place tonight, Dale. God bless you, church. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee, zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. 
Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We are located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.